Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back with another video today. Today is not quite August 1st, but we are going to be doing the August Reptile Room Tour for all of your beautiful faces. This is our reptile room, Brie and I's reptile room. It is something that I am fairly proud of and I know Brie is as well, so make sure you sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, it'll probably be a long one, and enjoy some rare reptiles. Let's go! Now before we get into the video, I did just want to mention to you all that Brie and I, if you are in Ontario, will be vending the August 22nd Reptile Expo in Mississauga, Ontario. See us there, buy your tickets now, links down below. We'll have animals, we'll have a bunch of stuff that you guys actually haven't seen yet, so <laughs> maybe by the end of August some of you will have. We'll have a bunch of stuff there, make sure you come check it out. Uh, let's get on with the video. So this rack is filled with some of our uh, pre-baby hognose bins. Um, these guys are obviously empty. These are also empty, but we have an entire incubator full of hognose eggs. So if you guys are interested in hognose and are in Canada or the U.S., hit us up. Those right there are the ones that are due. These two were laid later. So that's exactly what's going to be going in these divided bins. Last time we had baby hog noses, we did bins like this, but the entire shoe bin. And unfortunately it didn't really work as well as we hoped it would. Not saying that any of the babies died or any of them escaped or anything, but they just didn't eat for the first <laughs> up to like six months of them uh, existing. So in this guys, we cut down the space and it's super easy to clean. I mean, we got watered cups in there. We got a little cork. Uh, we might add a small little fake plant to each one. We haven't quite decided yet, but uh, yeah, that's what the setup is going to be looking like. And then down here is our first rarities of the room. And this is a trio of Lucasium Damium, which are these little guys right there. Hey bud, this is the male. They are quite cool little creatures, really bright reds. They're an Australian gecko. He's obviously very hungry. That uh, is extremely rare in Canada. They're super, super personable. I'll post a picture right here. We're weighing some of the uh, new members of the family that you guys haven't met yet and will not meet in this video, but you can see just all of their faces staring at him, uh, wondering what the heck's going on. So these guys are super charismatic. They don't really like to be held very much. Hello? She's very pastel compared to the male and the other female. She's actually looking pretty good right now, but her colors are much more muted and just a lot different than the other female and the male as well. So these guys are so cool. I'm, I'm very happy we we got them. And the last female's over here. Oh, of course you recede. Fine. Wait, what if I do finger food? <laughs> finger food? Hmm. So yeah, that's these guys. Uh, we do plan to move them into a bigger setup. Uh, we're just trying to wait for them all to mature because these two, the male and the, the second female that I showed you, are a little bit younger um, and they're just not quite ready to pair yet. So eventually they will be going in a larger setup, but uh, that's just not right now. Very, very cool geckos and ones that are super, super rare. <laughs> Um, but moving down here, we have my man Saguaro, which is a Arizona mountain king snake. This is Saguaro, again, Arizona mountain king snake, Lampropeltis, uh, Pyromelana. I believe he is a wooden eye, and he is a beautiful little guy. Uh, he's growing a lot. Uh, I mention it every video, but he will be, and the next one you're about to see will be going into these two PVC tanks right here. But I mean, they're both still kind of small for that setup. And there's a lot of other setups that need to be finished before them. So those will be done, but uh, just not quite yet. And in here is Bree. <laughs> It's Bree's little goober. This is Scoria Bree's gray banded king snake. Stunning example of a gray band. Just beautiful. Actually, they just ate, so I don't want to 
bug them too much. You can still see a big lump in her, so I'm just gonna let her be. Actually, I do kind of need you to move in order to put this back. I know you're filled with... Okay, sure. Just go right back in. There you go. Yeah, so that is Scoria. And then down here, we have Mabel. So this is just a normal female hognose. She just laid a clutch for us. This is Mabel. A just normal female hognose. Not head for anything as far as we know, but I guess if something really weird pops out of her clutch, then <laughs> we'll know she's head for something. But uh, she laid a clutch of eggs for us. First year breeding. Very... Very pleased with her. She's doing fantastic, eating a bunch. And she's a pretty nice normal, all things considered. There you go. That's Mabel. And then uh, the rest of the rack is actually empty. With that being said, we can move on to our beautiful Fijian banded iguana. This is Totoka. He is a Fijian banded iguana or the Centralian Fijian banded iguana. He is about two and a half years old and he's going to be getting a much improved enclosure. Uh, I've teased it in some of the other videos. It's right now currently filled with bins and such. So I'm not going to show you guys right now because it's kind of messy, but uh, he's going to be upgraded into a fully custom four foot by four foot tall by 28 inch deep tank. Um, we got branches, we got plants, we got all this cool stuff to put in there with them. There's no reasonable argument for anybody to keep them in a tank of that size. So this was a temporary tank and he will be getting upgraded shortly. These guys are illegal in the States because of the Lacey Act. So you're not really gonna see too many down there. I think they have them at like the San Diego Zoo and a couple other zoos down there, but for the most part, zoos don't even have them. Fortunately in Canada, we don't have that same law. So we are able to keep them, thankfully. <laughs> Sick animal, love them so much. Down here, we got the Crazy Turts. So these guys are moved into their new setup and they don't have water in their dish because they go absolutely psychotic when you add water. So I just kind of figured, I was like, you know what? For now, we're just gonna chill, enjoy our time together and not have any water in their dish. <laughs> they will be getting fed and such. Right after this, there's not a whole lot to say about them. Their tanks are good. I mean, I set them up just recently, so they haven't really grown in or anything like that. They're just kind of existing right now, especially with them trampling around and beating up all the plants. It's kind of hard to grow them. I know they will start to grow over time, so that's, that's good. Um, that's one half, and then this is the other half. Pretty, pretty simplistic setup. At some point, I would love to do a display with like a running waterfall and all that stuff for them. But just in the room currently, it it's not in the cards, unfortunately. So eventually, though, they will be getting a sweet hookup. And uh, don't blame me, please. That would be kind of rude. These are the Geomita Spangleri or the Black-Breasted Leaf Turtles. They are doing well. Brand new setup. Anthony Perleone approved. Uh, he's literally the guy that wrote the book on them, so, you know, slightly credible source. Down here, we have the Rainbow Boa. This is Bree's uh, male rainbow. Uh, he's not out right now, but I did catch a clip on my phone of him earlier today when I was cleaning up uh, some of the food dishes. Uh, he was right there, so I'll click that. So here's Ronin. <coughs> Don't pull away. I want to open this. Hi, buddy. Hi, bud. And yeah, that's Ronan. Uh, he's doing very well. He's a big boy, to be totally honest. He is probably all of four and a half feet or so, four feet, somewhere around there. We haven't actually measured him, but this tank is a four foot by two foot by 16 inch tall. So it's, it's big enough for him for right now. But again, eventually when Bree and I have our own place, uh, we will be upgrading him as well into, I don't know, I haven't really thought about it yet, but probably like a four foot by 
two foot by three foot, somewhere around there, or maybe a six foot by two foot by three foot. Not sure yet. This tank is a mixture of live and fake plants. These right here are fake plants. All those are all fake. And then the real ones are obviously under the light. So we got some pothos in there. There's some uh, Tradescantia kind of growing very spindly around. And uh, that's all that's alive in there right now. All that stuff at the back, again, all fake. <laughs> so um, there's tons of isopods and springtails, as well as superworms and superworm beetles in there. So it stays pretty clean. Obviously, we spot clean it when we find some waste in there. So <laughs> standard stuff. Uh, we're moving around the flow of the room. This is the sun, apparently. <laughs> this is the wooden stack from back home. If you guys have been following me for a while, then you guys will be familiar with this stack. When I moved here just about a year ago now, um, Sky unfortunately did not make the flight. So in his tank, we have Breeze Blue Tongue Skink, but uh, we'll, we'll get to him. Up here, we have the Euromastics. These guys are one of my favorite animals. They are just so charismatic, so chill, very calm. Well, the male is. I honestly think if you get your heating right, they are much better than any bearded dragon or even a leopard gecko, especially if you don't want to feed uh, live insects, then they're definitely better than leopard geckos. So they obviously need more space though. So that's that's my opinion. This is their setup. Uh, we got a deep heat projector, uh, just a stand, like a 25 watt basking bulb. Their basking spot currently is about 145. That's about as hot as it gets in there. And then uh, I have a thermostat controlling it. You can see the probe in focus now. And then uh, their tank is a four by two by 18 inch tall or, or 16 inch tall. It was kind of a weird scrap tank that was <laughs> left over from the scrap wood that we had. That is the female there. This is Olga. And I believe she's going to lay soon, hopefully. Uh, I don't think she's laid yet. She's looking a little round still. So that's Olga. And then Hugo, the male, is back there. You can see his face hiding. Uh, he typically, when because they are cohabbed, when she is about to lay, he becomes a little bit more reclusive. But that said, he still gets food. He's still eating. He's still a great weight. Otherwise, I would separate them. So just keep that in mind. But those are Euromastics, Euromastics Jerai, Saharan Euromastics, whatever you want to call them, that's what they are. Uh, now we can move down here to our beautiful Indy. This is Bree's Northern Blue Tongue Skink. Hi, Indy. Come on. Whoa. He's like, dude, do you have quail eggs for me? They're in the fridge, bud. We'll feed you after this video, okay? Okay. Sound good? Deal? Deal. Pound it. Pound it. Okay, that works. I'll take it. Um, Indy is, like I said, a northern blue tongue skink. Again, his tank, as well as my male yellow Aki's tank, are four foot by two foot by two foot, or 120 gallon tanks. His tank has been semi weatherproofed. Uh, it's not completely waterproof, obviously, but it does hold a little bit of humidity. He is a northern blue tongue skink, so they don't need nearly the humidity requirements as something like a Tilliquagigas, so that's like the uh, Halmahera or the Maroki blue tongue skink. They need a lot higher humidity than the Australian, so. Again, his tank is not live planted. It is all fake plants, but you know what? It works. He is a pretty nice blue tongue skink, honestly. Right, buddy? Yeah. Unfortunately, I gotta close the door because we're, we're moving. We're moving. Come on. Watch your face. There we go. And down here, we have Vulcan, my yellow Aki. So he is chilling like a villain back there, literally like a villain. He looks evil. He is not super tame, all things considered. He's not aggressive by any means, but he's just not like Bowser or some of my old Aki monitors tame. Um, he recognizes food. He doesn't bite me unless it's just an excitement bite when I open the tank and he happens to mistake my fingers for a cricket. But for the most part, he's actually very good at not clamping down on my fingers. So that's fantastic. Um, back there we have a 
Universal rock background, he uses that all the time. The basking spot is set to about 135, and yeah, the rest of the tank is all gravy. This is the minimum size I'd recommend for an Aki monitor. Honestly, I'd rather do a six by two by two or even a six by two by three. Every square inch of this tank is being used by him. And with that said, that back there, that's a live plant. It is. There's a live plant growing in an Aki tank. What? That's nuts. Right, Vulcan? He's an absolutely wicked animal. Uh, I, I love monitors so much. Someday, I hope to have some tree monitors like my buddy Papa Dion. I'm sure you guys know him, Reptiliatus, here on YouTube. But that is Vulcan. And moving away from the wooden rack, we have this beautiful six-foot rack here. This is home to some dart frogs, Sheldon, chameleon geckos, northern spotted tail geckos, and a few more things. So let's check it out. Starting at the very top here, we have my morning geckos, which will be getting moved into this tank here. Uh, it's just settling in. I need to get some more plants for it and plant it out. But uh, after it is fully planted, they will be getting moved in. So that's good and then up here we have a pair of chihuahua geckos they are fantastic you're gonna see more chihuahuas later on in the video but uh yeah those are the chihuahuas i'm not gonna bother showing them again i will be making a meet my pets so chill and wait for that <laughs> moving on to kind of a head height rack for myself we have Eurodactylodes in these first two tanks that are kind of mirrored images of each other, I suppose. These are the chameleon geckos, chameleon tail geckos, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that is a Eurodactylodes occidentalis. These are one of the rarer species of Eurodactylodes. Fantastic little geckos, great beginners, and uh, yeah, something that isn't super common, like these specifically, the Occidentalis, I wouldn't recommend if you're a beginner because they're expensive, but their care is super easy. So yeah, the Eurodactylodes Occidentalis are super chill. They live in a 12 by 12 by 18 Exoterra. They're doing fantastic. We actually have two clutches of eggs for these guys, so stay tuned for them on the website, which I will talk about in another video. Now over here, we have Eurodactylodes Viardi. These guys are a fantastic beginner gecko. They're relatively chill. I mean, even if they were upset, what really could they do to you there? So this is my finger right next to her. They're tiny. They're very small. Uh, super, super cool gecko. Very relaxed for the most part. You can kind of handle them at your own will. They don't have super sticky toes, so it is kind of tough to handle them. Um, but we have a trio in this 12, 12, 18. We have the other female back there hanging out on the perch. And this is the tank itself. Now, if you guys are interested in some of these, I can ship to the United States. But, A, it is very expensive if you're buying one gecko. So what I've been thinking of doing is making a group shipment of, you can do these guys, you can do hog noses as well, anything uh can all be packed in one box sent to one of my buddies and then shipped out to you from there so if you guys are interested hit me up on instagram do whatever you need to do to get in contact with me uh the veards chameleon geckos uh, or chameleon tail geckos and and we have so many of them these guys are chock-a-block filled with them actually i believe look at that we got some babies. Yay. That's so exciting. So, yeah, two more of them. <laughs> they, uh, this is the first time I've been in the room and I actually didn't notice that these guys had hatched yet. So, that's exciting. Two more babies. Uh, we got one holdback. I believe there's two in here. There's three in here, two in here, and three in here. So, we got a couple of them ready to go. So, if you guys are interested, let me know on Instagram. Uh, I guess leave a comment down below if you have to, or you can also visit our website at thejunglevault.ca and uh, check them out there. They probably won't be up by the time that you guys see this, but uh, in the near future, 
they will be added and can be sold. So next to them is another exciting species of gecko. These guys are an Australian species of gecko. They span all the way from Northern Australia, all the way through Central Australia. You can see down there on their little cards. If you guys are interested, I mention this every video, but uh, man, I should really contact him for a coupon code. <laughs> um, this is uh, Club Forest Designs. You can check them out there. But uh, yeah, these guys are Northern Spiny Tail Geckos. These are the two females. They're not as attractive looking. You can see one kind of back there. You can see it there. But over here is a pair that we have and you can see them both in frame right now the male it's got a lot of dark colors a nice yellow tail very very cool species just beautiful and the female is actually right behind them you can see back there she is another stunner these guys are cricket crazy when it comes feeding time and the crickets come out these guys both both pairs the the species in general are completely batshit they are fantastic feeders uh, i will be making a feeding my pets video like feed all my pets in the near future either this month or next month we'll we'll see because i like to do one in december as well so yeah fantastic species <laughs> love them to death very charismatic hopefully we'll have babies next year probably now moving over here is a tub with a lychee in it uh, this is my girlfriend's female lychionis gecko i i'm not gonna bother pulling her out because again uh we will be making a meet my pets and you will see her eventually but she she's a lychionis gecko i'm just trying to see if she's out i can see her tail at the very back there you can see some skin folds <laughs> a big cranky gecko that's what they are now we can move down to the middle rack this is my girlfriend's madagascar rain frog i don't see it right now the, the best part about rain frogs is we haven't seen it really since we put it in the tank <laughs> they're kind of pet holes we hear it chirp every night it, it's a male so we hear it calling every night but Beyond that, that's kind of our interaction with it. It's very limited, and uh, we toss crickets in there, they disappear, and then we hear calling. I mean, we've had it for probably about a month and a half now, and we see it every now and then kind of under the wood back there, but it's never actually out. So, good times. There's nothing in here, just some plants and such. Uh, nothing nothing too crazy. And here we have my Amirigo Basileri. I can't really fit the camera in there, but can you see them? Yeah, you can. There they are. You can kind of see a couple frogs. There it is. <laughs> Those are the Mirga Basilera that I have. They're actually they were calling all morning. It's really nice their call. It's very like chirpy kind of bird noise, so that's kind of soothing, especially when you're in the reptile room chilling, doing some work. Uh, it's nice to hear them calling, but they will be getting a tank. I haven't decided exactly what size yet. But I'm thinking of putting them in a tank that size. Uh, custom doing it, obviously, because I have this one and I have that one up there. Both the exact same size. If not, I'd consider using a tank this size as well. It's the 361824 from Exoterra. We have the one that the Fijian Banded Iguana is in. And then we also have one in storage that's brand spanking new. So got a couple of those kicking around as well. It's more of a question of which size do I pick but that will be a Tetris game for later not right now they're doing well in the bin Amirga is my only other dart frogs currently although I will be getting a few more in about a month or so from now so this is the beautiful Ufaga Pumilio Elmerente. Unfortunately, I don't see her in here right now. She is a lone female, but with the new frogs that I'm getting, I'll also be getting a male for her so we can get some calling back in the room because I, I missed the calls so bad. Down here, we got some nice plants. Uh, we got a Syngonium Rei. We got a Urstar or a Cryptanthus. I think they're like Dark Lord or Dark something. Um, we got some Busa philandra, which is actually an aquatic plant. 
We got a Begonia Metallica, random Begon or a random Philodendron from the jungle of Peru. And then we have some Cebu Blue at the back there growing up to the top. And at the very front here, there's some Philodendron Mykins as well. So a nice tank, small tank, but it's, it's good for them. They She's totally fine in there, so doing well in that front. Now, with that being said, we can move down to the beautiful Cardinal. I don't know if she's going to come out, and when she does, she always thinks it's dinner time. Her bin is looking pretty solid, actually, all things considered. That's a coffee plant. We got a Pothos Enjoy. We have a shrimp shrub or a shrimp plant right there and a kangaroo fern as well. There you go. You can kind of see her side there. <laughs> she she is in here. Obviously, you guys can see that now. But uh, yeah, normally she comes out. But I guess she was just fed recently. So she's probably chillaxing. Cardinal is a Thai bamboo rat snake. She is a Oreocryptophis porphyraceous cocci. Good luck getting that right. It's not an easy name to pronounce, but that is Cardinal. What's cool about them is they like their temperatures very cold, like like 75 as their hottest. When you pick her up, you can feel just how cold and kind of icy she is, and they thrive at that temperature. So she's at the bottom with no heat, none of that kind of deal, and she's doing fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to getting her new setup done as well again there's just so many projects to do you're always upgrading something or <laughs> working on this or working on that it's never stagnant occasionally you get new animals as well and then it becomes a entirely new process of upgrading and building enclosures and enjoying the process never a dull moment here speaking of new enclosures sheldon the main man the main man shell um i don't want to hear anything about his water because i just changed that literally two minutes before i started filming i changed it because he fills it up like it is now sheldon's an eastern herman's tortoise uh he's doing fantastic he did recently get moved from under the table to on the rack so that's nice uh he's got uvb t5 hanging up actually here uh, and then he's got a heat lamp there. So he's doing okay, but uh, that's part of the process of getting her out is because then he will have this entire bottom shelf as a pen for himself, uh, which will end up being six and a half feet long by two feet deep by 16 or so inches tall, just basically tall enough for him to not get out. Uh, and that'll be all him. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, I will make a video of that when the time comes. Just uh, that'll be a project for later. Probably throughout winter is when I'll upgrade him. Yeah, he's doing well. Chilling. Biting feet as per usual. The usual shell thing. So that's that. This is our workstation. This is where everything gets made. Food, prep, everything. Uh, it's not even really building new enclosures. It's mostly just feeding the snakes feeding stuff, preparing Pangea, all that kind of stuff. And then over here we have, I can't even really get it all in frame, but we have another rack of various goodies. Up top is all pretty much tropical plants, rare plants, aeroids, that kind of deal. Um, I will be making a aeroid tour or like a plant tour in the near future, but yeah down here. So in this tank, we have our Boyega dendrophila melanota. This is Reaper. He lives up to his name. We'll, we'll put it that way. <laughs> he definitely lives up to his name. Um, he's not super spicy yet, but uh, he's definitely getting the inklings of a spicy mangrove. They are a pain in the butt to get eating. He is still not eating for himself. We've had him for just about a year now. Yeah, he's still not eating for himself. So Keep that in mind when you're <laughs> looking at one of those pain in the butt toxes. He's in a 12 by 12 by 24 paludarium style. Well, I mean, he's not, it's not a paludarium, but that's what the tank is called. Paludarium style uh, exoterra. He is a good boy for the most part. During the day, he's pretty good. 
at night times when he comes alive, right, bud? Hi. There you are. Come see us. He's like, never. Uh, over here, we actually got one of his sheds hanging up top there. There, He looks tiny, and then he sheds, and you're like, wait, because it's wrapped around the back. It, this is like a two-foot-long shed or so, two and a half foot. Like, I know sheds stretch when they shed, but still, it's pretty crazy. And then here's our other sheds hung up there from various different creatures. The next tank you're about to see is actually a new-ish addition that I announced on the channel last video, or maybe two videos ago now. Either way, I'll leave the link in either one of the corners up there for you guys to check out, but it's the new Emerald Dragon Project, also known as the Emerald Grass Lizards. Hi, buddy. That's a female. That's the other female. They're clearly waiting for some food. And the male has a nice brown stripe down his back or down his laterals doing fantastic these guys have presented quite a challenge for me in the very beginning um one of them still the vet is coming over next week to just chop off the tip of its tail because it has a little bit of tail rot um, this one's tail is finally finishing its regeneration process we've gotten eggs from them and they laid again when we were away or when I was back in Calgary, I can't find them. So <laughs> they'll either hatch in the tank or they weren't fertile and they won't hatch. So uh, yeah, not too, too worried about it. Hoping to find their next clutch so I can just take that out and incubate it my own because that makes things a lot easier. But these guys are doing fantastic. I, they're so charismatic. They're so active. They're so much fun. I uh, highly recommend some long-tailed grass lizards. These guys are rare, like they're very hard to find, especially in North America, um, but their counterparts, you can find the long-tailed grass lizards in pretty much every pet store for dirt cheap. Just make sure you're willing to care for them. They will probably need a vet visit because they're all wild caught, or these guys aren't. Ones that you typically find in pet stores are all wild caught, and for the most part, not doing as well as they could be. So emerald grass lizards, one of my new passions for sure. They're just so charismatic, so funny, uh, and lots of energy, lots and lots of energy on these guys. They are constantly eating, constantly foraging, always looking for something new and exciting too. Over here we have Bree's pair of P.I. Chihuahuas. They are um, both currently hiding, of course. They're producing eggs. We actually just got eggs from them a few days ago, as a matter of fact. And we're just waiting for their first clutch to hatch here and probably, actually it's probably another like month and a half away or or more maybe. But uh, exciting stuff. Love the Chihuahuas. And if you're wondering what a Chihuahua looks like, we have one. This is Rocket. Rocket is, well, typically lives up to his name. He just gets off and zooms. Here's another male P.I. Chihuahua. Uh, his, he's actually living and breathes like first tank she ever built. So that's kind of funny. He is supposedly a Northern Gecko line. Uh, Brie found him on Kijiji two or three years ago, uh, as just a baby being kept in deplorable conditions. That is Rocket. He is a beautiful little gecko. And they're actually not so little. They're probably like 10 and a half, 11 inches long. So they're not super small geckos. But now, we can move down to here. These are the hog noses. This is our resident land shark. This is Callista, our beautiful arctic albino anaconda. Stunning little creature. Uh, I just noticed she just went to the bathroom in her tank, so uh, that sucks, but I will have to clean that after. She is psychotic. She will eat anything. Like, if I put my finger here, she's flying out of me, waiting to eat some food. Uh, <laughs> she is uh, a little bit of a, a disturber, needless to say. That is Callista. She is unrelated to the pair that is over here. In here, we have Bree's male albino anaconda. And in here, we have our female anaconda head albino red line, I believe. That is Rowan. She is, oh, now you come out. Will you actually like come out and show yourself? 
Or are you just being a big bozo? Here she comes. <laughs> Ferocious. You're you're a monster. Yeah. You're so scary. <laughs> but that is Rowan, the female she is. Got a lot of character. You can pick her up just fine. She puts on a big bluff and <laughs> loves to show off. She did double clutch for this year, uh, which is our first time ever double clutching a hog nose. And she's doing well. She put on a bunch of weight right back after. We fed her heavy after feeding. Next year when we breed her, I will be doing kind of a video series on it, but you can definitely expect a video of the babies when they hatch. They're due to hatch actually like two days ago. So that video should be coming out fairly soon. Uh, Lux on the other hand, who's the male is, oh, you're actually there. Come on. This is Lux, the male albino anaconda, the father to all of our babies. He is doing a great job. Love him. Super chill. Um, he doesn't eat very much though. Like he's very reluctant to eat. Very sporadic eater. Doesn't lose a lot of weight. Like he's totally fine, but just doesn't eat a ton. So yeah, that's Lux. Hog noses are truly the best because they're super chill. They don't get very big and they're I don't know, they're very charismatic. But as babies, they can be a pain in the butt to get feeding. We're almost wrapped up the room. I really hope my battery can hold up to it. But we got over here, a plant rack, doesn't matter right now. Down here, uh, I'm just kind of flying through this. We have Striker. Striker is the OG of my channel. You guys know this. I've had him for 17 years. He's still going strong, still a good boy. He's, he's always in the back there now. He only comes out really at nighttime, which is unfortunate, but he's doing fantastic in his uh, live planted setup. Every single plant you see in here is, well, <laughs> mostly alive, but they are live plants, so. <laughs> uh, his tank's doing well. I do want to redo it at some point though, because I just think that it doesn't look as good as it could. So we'll see what I can do, but again, that's very distant future, kind of like a, Oh, when I'm bored, I'll do it. That kind of deal. <laughs> but thankfully, I'm not bored very often. So moving on from Striker up a row. And here we have the big eyed tree frogs. Um, their tank is doing okay. You can tell that that begonia is again taking over as it usually does. Probably going to end up being for sale at the show. We haven't quite decided yet because unfortunately they're all males. Uh, we're really hoping to reproduce this, but uh, after Brie got home and she moved them in here, they were all calling, so that's unfortunate, but uh, the Exoterra tank is doing all right. I don't like the water portion. I kind of wish that I never did it, but here we are. It's and It, it was an experiment uh, with a higher barrier, more water, a better filter. I think it would have been fine, but uh, just... In this kind of setup, it's just not ideal. But the frogs themselves are doing great. The plants, um, the dry lock kind of kills off plants at the very beginning, so that's unfortunate. But now the plants are starting to kind of get reestablished. You can see the Cebu Blue there. Um, there's also a Philodendron Melanochrysum back there. There's a Bulbophyllum Orchid back there. There's some just random plants for the background. That very random bromeliad that Bree just happened to stick in the tank. I, I mean, I guess it's there now, so that's that. <laughs> um, and then the Philodendron Macaulay is doing really well, as you can see, nice big red leaves. That was kind of my vision for this tank, is just kind of a creek's edge, massive leaves hanging over it. And so far it's doing well. I think we might be putting in, if we end up selling these, these are breeze frogs. I just know she's talked about it before, but if we do end up selling them, uh, we might end up putting these guys in there. Uh, not sure just yet, but these are actually right there. Cruzia hyla craspidopus, fantastic species of frog. I get a ton of flack for keeping them in a bin, but look at this bin. like. Look at it. It's so lush. It's so full. <laughs> it's massive. Uh, so, I, yeah. You know what? Haters are going to be haters no matter what you do. So, I'm looking at you, Troy, by the way. Hater. 
Troy's a hater. I, I believe that's it. All the rest is just springtails, isopods, plants, plants, empty tank. That's kind of the room. I really wish I had a wide angle lens to show you guys kind of the full scale of it, but I'm very proud of it. Come on. What are you doing? Where are you going? What's the plan? Hop up. There you go. All right, you guys, that's gonna end the video. Uh, Totoka chilling. I really hope he doesn't poop on my head. That would suck, but Totoka and I are gonna get back to feeding everybody. I wanted to mention a huge shout out to my girlfriend, Bree. Obviously, I couldn't do this all alone. Most of the stuff in here is either like co-owned or hers. So just keep that in mind when you guys are judging about how many reptiles we have. Uh, if you guys stayed to the end of this video, you probably aren't judging all that much. So I want to thank you guys all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave it in the comment section. Uh, I get back to every single comment that I see. Ow. Oh. Oh, Iguana Claws suck. Oh, I'm crying. <laughs> Dude, that's the rack. Leave it alone. There you go. I get back, bro, climbing all over the camera, all over. So <laughs> thank you guys all very much for watching. Like I said, if you want to see more videos, Hognose Baby's coming soon. Uh, many builds, a lot of tours of people's play, specifically of frogs and a really cool um, chameleon room slash cool Europlatus room. So that's coming at you. It's going to be a very busy month of August. I want to thank you guys all very much for joining me. Follow me on Instagram. Do all of the stuff. We'll catch you in the next one. Later.